Hello, it's Susie Chocolate here from Susie Chocolate Crafts. So lovely to be back with you uh, with a step-by-step -step instructions and photos of each of the steps, showing you all how to make a super Mother's Day card. Marta de Becker, aka Drop of Sunshine, asked if I would make something for Mother's Day with her great new collection of designer papers, card inserts and ephemera called Spring Awaiting. And this is what I have come up with. Um, the uh, digital designs are available exclusively at Marta's Drop of Sunshine Dot Art store and you can buy the designer paper and ephemera pack separately or all three packs together as a collection which actually saves you a couple of pounds. If my card inspires you to get in the craft room and make one similar, please make sure you post a picture over on Marta's fan page on her group of Drop of Inspiration as she would really love to see what you make with her new collection and I'd love to see what you make too and so you can pop a picture on my Susie Chocolate Crafts group on Facebook. If you prefer to read and see rather than watch and listen, I've also written an article over on my blog that's at talisword.wordpress.com in my craft section. Um, there's a link in the description box below. Also, the links to Marta's Facebook group and my Facebook group will be down there too, along with a list of supplies that I have used to make this card. So let's get started. So once you have purchased and downloaded the Spring Awaiting digital collection, you'll need to print page one, which is this sheet of sentiments and flowers, and then page 12, which is this sheet of leaves. They are both in the ephemera pack. I use photographic paper to print mine this time, but you can use any white cardstock you have that's around about 200 to 250 GSM. I used my brother's scan and cut machine to fussy cut the sentiments and flowers and the leaves. I set a 0.04 outset border in scan and then into direct cut. The edges of a couple of the leaves were hard to pick up when scanning and cut the tops off a couple of them, but they cut out really well and I was happy with the way that they looked. And most of them actually cut really really well but you can see the this three two cut the tops off but they gave it a nice jagged pattern and the leaves actually look okay and then this is the sentiments the happy mother's days cut out really randomly but i do like it i think i'll continue the jagged edge around the diamond shape with my scissors you can use scissors to fussy cut these elements out if you don't have an electric cutting machine just leave a small white border around each of the elements if you'd like to see more scan and cut tutorials, pop over to my YouTube channel where I have a series called Look How Easy It Is To, where I'm showing you how to do different things with your machine. Once all your leaves are cut out, I arrange the leaves on a piece of five and three quarter square white card. I started diagonally from the top left hand corner down to the bottom right corner and then filled in the bottom of the card with more of the leaves. I left some of the leaves hanging over the edges just to make the pattern look more effective and when I was happy with the layout I glued the leaves into place with some Kalal quick dry tacky glue and trimmed the edges with my scissors cutting off all the overhanging leaves. Once the leaves had dried, I laid uh, the piece of card with the leaves facing upwards inside the lattice hearts embossing folder and ran it through my big shot. This not only embossed the pattern from the folder, but it also pressed the leaves flat into the cardstock, which made it look like um, they were actually integrated into the card. And then the next step was to ink the front of the card. So I used two blending brushes and lightly coloured the edges of the card front with a little distress ink. Uh, firstly, I used the seedless preserve and then the tumbled glass. Uh, went all the way around the edges until it was um, quite a mottled look, as you can see there in the picture. Um, it's shades of the pink and the blue. Once I'd done the edges, I then very lightly used the residue that was on the seedless preserve brush and brushed it lightly over the embossed parts of the card front 
I'm missing out the parts that were covered with the leaves. So I sort of just moved the brush, took it up onto the tip. Actually, I could have got a smaller brush out if I wanted to, but I've got the ink on that brush. So I thought I can just do this. I can just in between the um, the leaves and um, spread the colour so that the there was a very sort of a hooey pinky colour um, on the background of the card. Next, I add a double sided foam tape to the back of the sentiment, leaving a gap at the bottom to glue the tassels on. Um, so just make sure you don't put that uh, foam right to the edge. Then the next step was sticking on the string decoration. I thought it would look quite nice if it had some extra texture on the front of the card. And so I've got some quite thin cotton string and decided to stick it along the wavy edge of the middle of the embossing folder pattern. I ran a little bead of quick dry tacky glue along the shape of the embossed lines through the centre of the card front. Um, next I laid the string over the glue and pressed it into place and cut the string along the edge of the card. The glue dries really clear so if a little oozes out you shouldn't be able to see that. But if there's a lot, I would pick it up with a pokey tool or a pin or a cocktail stick or something like that because you, I don't like it when the glue is shiny around the edges. It's just one of the things that, you know, I have a thing about. But I would definitely try and remove some of that so it didn't spread outside of the lines where the string is actually being attached. I then decided that I would make the tassels for the uh, Mother's Day. It's like a little rosette that I made that into because I thought I looked at the shape of the Mother's Day sentiment I'd cut and I thought, oh, that looks like a little rosette head, uh, having come from competition background. <laughs> I laid the sentiment on the card to see where I wanted it and then I could measure the length of the tassels. So the tassels uh, were two and a half inches long. So to start off with, I cut 10 pieces of white string at two and a half inches long and I laid them touching each other side by side, as you can see there, on a piece of sellotape. You could use washi tape if you haven't got sellotape. So I did that just so that they would stay very close to each other while I laid them down. So once they were stuck to the sellotape, I then turned the sellotape over and stuck it down onto my desk so that they stayed together for the hot glue. I ran a bead of hot glue along the left hand side where the ruler starts and then with a piece of release paper that I'd taken off of the uh, double sided foam tape I used that release paper to press on top of the hot glue so that it squidged in between the pieces of string and stuck them all together. Actually, after I'd taken this picture, I added another two pieces of string because I wanted to make the tassels a little bit wider. You can see that in this uh, in this finished um, rosette. So next, I attached the tassels to the sentiment and added the Nouveau drops. To do that, I put another line of hot glue on the already glued end at that left-hand side of the ruler. I left them stuck to my desk and... Once I've got the hot glue on there, I then laid the sentiment on the top, ensuring that the point at the bottom of the sentiment was in the centre of the tassels, just so that that made that look nice and even. Also, I made sure that the tassels were stuck, actually stuck onto the bottom of the sentiment, where I'd left the gap I mentioned earlier when we were sticking the double-sided foam tape on. And then when the hot glue had dried, I removed the sellotape from my desk and the rosette sentiment was ready to decorate with the uh, peachy keen vintage Nouveau drops. And I put a small drop on each of the points of the Mother's Day sentiment. I decided where I was going to have my sentiment and then marked the dots in the centre of the embossed lines where it was laying I marked the ones under it with a pencil um, so using the Nuva drops I put a drop on each of the dots that were through that center line of the card front making sure that I didn't put any where I'd marked with a pencil because I didn't want any Nuva drops underneath the sentiment because obviously we've got the foam tape underneath there 
So all that's left to do was to stick the sentiment to the front of the card and then the card front to the card base and make a decoration for the inside of the card. And so I removed the release paper from the back of the foam tape and added some Kalal quick dry tacky glue so I had a little bit of wiggle room. So I positioned the sentiment on the card front pressing into place. Putting a little bit of wet glue also ensures the sentiment stays stuck when the foam tape adhesive dries out because it does eventually if somebody's going to treasure the card and, and keep it for a few years. Um, the foam tape does dry out itself and so it's good to put a little bit of wet glue on there. And then I used Galal all-purpose glue to cover the back of the card front and I stuck that to a six inch square card base ensuring that I had a nice equal border all the way around the edge of the card. And then I went on to make a little decoration with another sentiment from Marta's collection. I laid the sentiment for the inside of the card on my desk and placed some of the flowers I had fussy cut out from the sentiment sheet right at the beginning that I showed you. I laid them under the right hand side until I was happy with the little arrangement. I then used some of the quick dry tacky glue to stick them into place on the back of the sentiment. Once that had dried I used the same glue to cover the back of the sentiment and not the flowers. I wanted to leave the flowers loose and then placed the sentiment inside of the card on the right hand side as you can see there. I had it slightly above centre because normally you would write more at the bottom of the card than you would at the top and when that was fully dry I lifted the flowers up a little bit and curved the edges so that they were not totally flat on the card and that's the card complete. So I hope you like what I have made here today. Don't forget to leave me a comment and a like if you have enjoyed my tutorial. And if my card inspires you to get in your craft room and make one similar, please make sure that you post a picky over on Marta's fan group page. That's a drop of inspiration. As she would really love to see what you've made with her new collection of papers. Or even if you haven't used Marta's papers and you've used some of your own I'd like to see what you make over on my Susie Chocolate Crafts group on Facebook too. If you haven't already subscribed please consider subscribing. I would love to see you in my next tutorial. Bye for now!